Hi guys, welcome to another esoteric tech tutorial on data structures and algorithms in Go. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing tries. Tries are kind of a unique data structure that you'll often see on coding tests or interviews, uh, but the good news is they're not terribly difficult to implement. In this tutorial, I'm going to be discussing what a try is, why you would use one, uh, then I'll go into how it works and how to create them. And the focus of this programming channel and tutorials like these is really to help you become a more well-rounded developer and really to better prepare you for programming interviews. So if you find this information to be helpful or informative, please do subscribe and like to receive more content like this. Let's get started. Let's first cover the definition of a try. The abbreviated Wikipedia definition is a data structure used for locating specific keys from within a set. Uh, but if you're like me, that definition probably just doesn't explain enough, uh, which is why I really like the one below it, uh, which is that it is a tree-like data structure whose nodes store the letter of an alphabet. And by structuring nodes in a particular way, words and strings can be retrieved from the structure by traversing down a branch path of the tree. And essentially, this means that it's a data structure that allows us to store and retrieve words and strings in an efficient and relatively fast way. Uh, last week, I mentioned that the purpose of these data structures is not only to just achieve a goal, but it's to do it in the most efficient way possible. And so there are obviously a dozen ways to store strings uh, but a try is the optimal solution in terms of retrieving those values. And a popular use case for a try is when you need to implement some type of word or character searching algorithm. And so if we hop over to Google here, uh, we can probably imagine how this algorithm might be used. So if I go ahead and type in CA here, we can see the search results that pop up. And if I add an R, it reveals other results. And then if I add a D here, it reveals a whole new set of results, right? And obviously each of these results will lead to, you know, thousands of different pages. Uh, but in terms of the actual strings and how they're stored, it wouldn't be efficient if Google was storing all of these strings separately. That wouldn't be efficient at all. Uh, a better way would be to store these in a way so that the strings that begin with other strings or are prefixed with other strings aren't stored separately. They're just an extension of the pre-existing string. And I'll show you guys what I mean. I'll go ahead and hop back over to the uh, PowerPoint here. Throughout this tutorial, you'll hear me use the word key somewhat interchangeably when talking about words or strings. And that's because when you're discussing a try, a key refers to the word that you're inserting or searching for. Uh, in addition, each character of the input key is inserted as an individual node in the try, and every node has an array of pointers that lead to the next level of nodes. And if that doesn't make sense yet, I promise it will in a second. So let's say that we wanted to store the word car. And for the sake of simplicity, we can assume that all the characters stored within this try are lowercase. As I mentioned, every try is made up of nodes and every node can have up to 26 children nodes. And we store them in an array, uh, which is initialized to a length of 26. So the indices of the array represent the characters and the value can either be null or a pointer to the next node in the string or key. When creating a try, we always start out with a root node, which is what you see here in blue. The first letter of car is C, and C is the third letter of the alphabet. And so we store a node in the third position of this array. The root node now has one child node. And notice I use the letter N here to represent a node because I don't want you to think we're storing the letter. We're storing a child node that represents that letter. So we now have our C node. And within that C node, again, we have an array and we store a node that represents the letter A in the first position 
of this array because A is the first letter of the alphabet. And then we do the same for the R node, which is a child of the A node. And notice I use a different color for R because that is actually the end of a word. And so I did that intentionally, and that's actually something we represent within each node. Uh, not only do we store arrays in each node, but we also store a field which contains a Boolean value indicating whether or not that node is the end of a word. So going back to our Google example, if we wanted to implement some type of auto-completion algorithm, if a user typed in CA, we could then iterate through our array here stored in the A node, and we could probably figure out the types of words that they might be trying to type in. And if we wanted to store the word card, well, we already have the first three letters stored in our tree. So we really just need to add a child node representing D to the array stored in the R node. And within the D node, we're also going to mark that this is the end of a word here. And so going back to our original try, uh, you can see that we actually have a number of words stored here. Uh, in addition to car and card, we have cot and cot which points to the same C node as card and cards. And then on the right side, we have some keys that start with a completely different letter, which is T. We have try, T-R-Y, try, T-R-I-E, and we also have trim. So hopefully all of this is making sense to you guys. Uh, now I'll hop over to code and show you guys how to create this. Okay, so in order for us to implement this try, there are a couple things we're gonna need to do right off the bat. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a constant that represents the size of each the, each array. So this will be, uh, I'm going to call this constant alphabet size underscore size, and I'll set it equal to 26. And then we want to create a actual node type. So this is going to be a new type of try node. And this will be of type struct. And as I mentioned, each node contains a array of child nodes. And it's going to be of length, alphabet size. And it's actually going to contain a pointer to these nodes. And then also each node contains a Boolean value representing if that node is the end of a word. So there's our type there. And the next thing we want to do is actually implement a function that acts as our node constructor. So basically uh, returns a pointer and it does that by creating a node with a set of default values. So this function is going to be called get node and it returns a pointer to this try node. And what it does first is it's going to create a pointer to this new node that we're going to be generating and it's going to set that end of words value to false. And then it's going to go through and set every one of its values in the array to nil. So we've got this function here that, as I said, sets all of its values to kind of these default values of false in each of them to nil. And this is missing a return statement because I actually have to return that node. There we go. All right. So uh, the next function that I want to implement is actually going to be uh, an insert function. And so this is going to be a function that allows us to actually insert a new key or string into the try. Uh, and it's going to accept the root node because that's the node that we always need to start out with whenever we're inserting a new key. And it's also going to accept, obviously, the new string that we want to insert. Next, what we'll do is create a variable called temp. And initially, we're going to set it to the root node. But its purpose is to really hold the node that we're examining as we traverse down the try. And so for each character we examine, what we're going to do is look in the current node, see if that character is represented in the array of that node, 
if it is, we will just go into that node and look in its array for the next character. Uh, if the character is not present, then we will create a new node and continue to do the same thing all the way down the try. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this out first, and then I will explain it. Okay, so here's our insert function. And the first line that I actually want to draw your attention to is this line 28 here, because I feel like that one has the potential to cause the most confusion when you're first learning about tries. And in order to kind of explain that, I want to jump down here to this main function. And you may have already noticed I printed out something here, 97, but that's the result of printing out actually this room because it's in single quotes, so it's a room. But when I print that out, I get 97. And if I print out B here, I get 98. And if I print out B minus A, you can probably already guess, we will get one. And I'm selling you that to say that every character has a decimal value and those values are in the same order as the alphabet. So C is 99, D is 100 and so forth. And you can obviously perform mathematical operations like subtraction on them. And so in order for us to check if a character is represented in an array, we of course need to know where its position would be in that array. Uh, but in order to do that, all we need to do is find how far a character is from the first position in that array, right? So what I'm saying is like, if you're standing in line somewhere and someone asks you, well, what position are you? You could say I'm the third person in line, or you could say I'm two away from the first person. And that's what this math here is doing. And our array is zero based. So its distance from A is its position. So B's position from A, well, you get one and its index is one. And so that's all we're doing here. It's finding out the position. And hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to stop the video, rewind it until it does. But make sure you stay until the end because I'm actually going to show you a completely different alternative to using arrays, uh, which is actually an implementation that I prefer over this one. So like I said before, there are kind of many ways you can implement these algorithms, uh, but they all essentially kind of do the same thing. And so moving on, uh, this for loop, what it's doing here is looping through each character of the key or the string that was inserted to see if that letter is stored in the current array. And if not, we call this get node function to create that node. And if it is actually, regardless of whether it is or not, what we're going to do is jump in to kind of jump into that next node and pretty much do the same thing for the next character in this string here. So we just keep on doing that, creating new nodes or jumping into the existing one all the way until we get to the point where we've come to the last letter in our string. And then, so we set that value to true to indicate, okay, this is the last node or the last character in the string. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. The next function that we're going to implement is a search function. And maybe you've already figured out that this function is actually going to be very similar to our insert function. Okay. So as I said, this is very similar to our insert function in the sense that we're going to loop through every character in the key to see if that value exists in the current node. And if it does, we'll continue to traverse down the node. If it does not, well, then we just simply return false. And as we continue to get down to the end of that string, once we hit that last letter, we're going to basically verify that this value is actually here, that this end of words value is actually set to true. And we're doing that because just because we, we find those letters, or that word doesn't actually mean that that word was already inserted. So for example, if I insert the word packaging into the try, and then I search for the word pack 
Well, yeah, I would find every single letter as I traverse down the tree. But once I get to K, that value won't be set to true. And so if I actually want to officially kind of store the word pack within my try, well, I'd actually have to insert it and then it would actually set this Boolean value on the K to true. Uh, and that's just for this implementation. That's for my implementation. There may be some use case where you say, okay, well, as long as the are the characters are present, you know, I don't really care if it's the end of the word. If you were, you know, creating some algorithm for a actual crossword puzzle or something like that, well, you may not care if it's the actual end of the word. You just want to know is that word present. Uh, so, like I said, it's these data structures are all about being able to use them and manipulate them for your specific use case. So I have my insert function and my search function here. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and actually uh, put some uh, calls in our main method here to actually test this out. OK, so here all I've done is create a slice of strings, uh, then created my root node, and then I iterate through this slice here. Uh, and use that insert function to insert them into the try, of course, starting with the root. And then I'm going to print out the result of searching for a few of those words. I'm going to search for an, golang, and man. And one of those should return false, actually. So you can see here it contains an and golang, golang, sorry, and man, as I said, is false, even though. Uh, we have mango in it, which of course has the word man in it. But as I said, uh, that end value won't have that Boolean value set to true. And so as I said earlier, the last thing I'm just going to quickly show you is an alternative way to do this, to kind of create a try without using, uh, without using an array at all. In fact, it's going to use a map instead. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this out and then explain it really quickly. OK, so what I've done here is actually completely done away with this concept of using an array to store our characters or nodes for our characters. Instead, what we use here is actually a map of a room to a pointer of the node. And doing this allows us to really just we don't even need to keep track of the positions of characters. We don't need to perform that, you know, those mathematical operations. All we need to do is pretty much just check our, you know, values stored in a map and go allows you to do that really easily. And what that's what this variable here is doing is OK. It's checking for the character uh, that we're iterating through. And if it's there, then this value of OK will return true. And then we pretty much perform the same logic. So I actually prefer this approach. Uh, over using the array. I showed you guys the array first because um, I think that one is probably what I see used more often, especially uh, if you're going to be implementing this in other programming languages. Uh, but I also see this one used as well. So uh, try it out, you know, do whatever works best for you. Um, I'm sure there are probably some advantages and, you know, pros and cons to both. Uh, but that pretty much does it for this uh, tutorial. I will post both of these implementations as links. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, as I mentioned before, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial on Esoteric Tech. Thanks for watching.